yes guys so welcome back so we were dealing with borrowing cost and we were talking about what is the definition of borrowing cost now fundamentally we should know why is borrowing cost really important the standard is important because the standard goes on to say that borrowing cost should be generally charged to P&L however in case the borrowing cost relates to a qualifying asset such amount of borrowing cost is eligible to be capitalized so this is fundamentally what the borrowing cost definition actually talks about so when i talk about borrowing cost so all these borrowing costs which i have already given you under the definition he is saying that the borrowing cost should be charged to p and unless such borrowing cost relates to something called as a qualifying asset the borrowing cost related to the qualifying asset is eligible to be capitalized i somehow missed that slide so let's understand what do you mean by this qualifying asset so I'm saying borrowing cost which is incurred on a qualifying asset is eligible to be capitalized. What is a qualifying asset then? A qualifying asset is an asset which necessarily takes which necessarily takes a substantial period of time to get ready for its intended use or sale. So I'm saying it should take necessarily a substantial period of time to get ready for its intended use or sale. What do I mean by this? What did I mean by saying that it should take substantially, it should take substantial amount of time? What do you mean by substantial? As fundamentally look at a CA student. For a CA student, six months is substantial. Hugely, very, very substantial because for us, our life changes every six months. Six months before, our friends are different. Six months later, our friends are different. You fail, I fail. We are the thickest of friends. You fail, I pass. We both are not friends. We are enemies now. So you need to understand six months is substantial time for us. Look at an engineering student, a B.Tech grad. So what, does, what happens to him? Four years. During the entire four years, at any point of time, he can complete his course. So that same liberty is not there to a CA student. So two people of the same age have a different substantial periods. Similarly, two enterprises may not have a similar substantial period of time. If I look at an enterprise which is into a retail segment, like I've given you the example of DMART or Ratnadeep, an item which is introduced as an inventory has to move within a span of less than one week. If my period is increasing beyond that, then that is a substantial period. If let's say an item is still stagnant for more than six months, it is very much substantial because I expect my inventory to move very fast. I expect users to come in or customers to come in pick the good and leave from there but unfortunately if a particular product of a particular company is not moving even for six months then it is significantly substantial for me let's say i am into construction of apartments okay residential housing is my deal and i am constructing some residential houses it's been six months and no customer has come in to purchase my product i wouldn't call it as substantial because to complete the construction itself, let's say it takes about 18 months period of time, six months cannot be considered as substantial here. So therefore, substantial period of time is a very, very, very subjective term. It is a very subjective term. Therefore, sub substantial period of time can significantly vary from enterprise to enterprise. That is the reason why he says substantial period of time is not defined by India S23. There is no particular definition of substantial period of time according to India's 23. India's 23 leaves it there. He says an asset which takes substantial period of time to get ready for its intended user sale is a qualifying asset. What is substantial period? Let the enterprise decide what is substantial to them. But standards main objective is to standardize everything. Harmonize entities. Make sure that everyone is on the same page. Therefore, you can pick the word substantial from accounting standard interpretation one. Your accounting standard interpretation one says that a substantial period of time is a period which is within 12 months. A period shorter than 12 months can be considered as substantial period. However, he says this is a rebuttable assumption. What do you mean by rebuttable assumption? The word is very tricky, right? Rebuttable assumption means a period longer than 12 months can also be considered as substantial period. A period longer than 12 months 
can also be considered as substantial period provided sufficient facts of the case are provided for provided we have sufficient facts of the case a period longer than 12 months can also be considered as a substantial period of time that is the meaning of rebuttable assumption rebuttable assumption means an assumption which can be contradicted but to contradict the assumption i need sufficient facts of the case if a period shorter than 12 months is considered as substantial period no facts of the case are necessary you need facts of the case only when you assume that your substantial period of time is longer than 12 months so i'm saying that is accounting standard interpretation 1 which gives you this rebuttable assumption for substantial period of time however in days 23 has been silent with regard to what is substantial period what is indes 23 saying a borrowing cost incurred on a qualifying asset is eligible to be capitalized to the cost of the asset what is a qualifying asset he says an asset which necessarily takes a substantial period of time to get ready for its intended use or sale can be considered as substantial uh, can be considered as a qualifying asset what is substantial period since there is nothing given under indes 23 i am picking the definition given under accounting standard interpretation 1 where it says substantial period is a period shorter than 12 months but it is a rebuttable assumption which means a period longer than 12 months can also be considered as substantial period provided sufficient facts of the case are provide uh, are are available therefore if sufficient facts of case are available your substantial period of time can be considered as a period longer than 12 months clear so when we say borrowing cost is eligible to be capitalized we know what is a borrowing cost we have seen the definition of borrowing cost we have seen that certain to a certain extent exchange differences also can be regarded as borrowing cost but now i am talking about how do i identify the borrowing cost which is eligible to be capitalized there he brings in the situation he says for the purpose of identifying borrowing costs which are eligible to be capitalized i'll bifurcate my borrowings into two types i'll categorize my borrowings into two types specific borrowing non specific borrowing what is a specific borrowing a specific borrowing is a borrowing which has been taken specifically for the purpose of qualifying asset so simple no a borrowing which has been taken for the purpose of the qualifying asset is specific borrowing this language won't be used in the standard you know what the standard uses very tricky language look at the definition given down there borrowing that would have been avoided if the construction of qualifying asset has not been taken up so i wouldn't have taken this borrowing had i not been constructing that qualifying asset ultimately it means i have taken that borrowing only for the purpose of that qualifying asset but the two negative statements used a borrowing would have been avoided negative if the construction of the qualifying asset is not taken up negative two negative sentences are basically used to define what is a specific borrowing your language my language a borrowing which is specifically taken for the purpose of the qualifying asset is called as a specific borrowing clear whatever is not a specific borrowing but still utilized for the purpose of qualifying asset is called as a non specific borrowing i have taken a borrowing for a term for a term of 10 years i have taken a term term loan such term loan i never said i will use it only for this purpose or this purpose it is pay taken basically for the construction a part of it has been utilized for the construction of a qualifying asset then such borrowings are called as non specific or general borrowing in simple sense non specific borrowing is any borrowing other than a specific borrowing to the extent of specific borrowing the interest or the borrowing cost on the specific borrowing is directly attributable to the qualifying asset therefore borrowing cost eligible to be capitalized is equal to the actual borrowing cost incurred on the borrowing reduced by return on idle funds reduced by return on idle funds what is this idle fund and why do you get a return let's say for example my qualifying asset had a cost of about 15 lakhs to be incurred over 12 months or let's say over 18 months 
about 15 lakhs to be incurred over 18 months. First six months I'll use for it. I'll use five lakhs. Next six months I'll use five lakhs. Last six months I'll use five lakhs. This is my expected utilization of the borrowing. Let's say first when I got the borrowing of the entire 15 lakhs, I thought anyways I'm not using 10 lakhs for the next six months. So what I did, I kept five lakhs aside. The balance 10 lakhs, I parked it into an investment. A short term investment was made. This investment has yielded some return. This is called as return on idle fund. It is a funds which are kept idle. They are parked into an investment. Such investment are yielding return. Such a return on the investment should be reduced from the actual borrowing cost. So therefore the actual borrowing cost on the entire 15 lakhs minus return on the 10 lakhs parked for six months should be the actual borrowing cost on specific borrowing which is eligible to be capitalized. This is very simple. But when it comes to non-specific borrowing, it becomes tricky. Why tricky? Because when you talk about non-specific borrowing, the borrowing utilized for a qualifying asset is only to a fraction. A certain amount has been utilized for the qualifying asset as well. The entire borrowing cost on non-specific borrowing is not eligible to be capitalized. Specific borrowing, entire borrowing cost is eligible to be capitalized. But on non-specific borrowing, entire borrowing cost is not eligible to be capitalized because the entire borrowing is not spent only on the qualifying asset. Therefore, we have to first consider what is the amount of borrowing actually utilized towards the construction of qualifying asset. That amount of borrowing utilized for construction of qualifying asset should be multiplied by a capitalization rate. What is this capitalization rate then? Capitalization rate is a concept which has propped up because of there could exist because of the fact that there could exist multiple non-specific borrowings in an enterprise. When there are more than one non-specific borrowing in an enterprise, then he is saying that I will take the capitalization rate as a weighted average rate of interest on non-specific borrowing. I'll consider it as weighted average rate of interest on non-specific borrowing. Only if I have multiple non-specific borrowing. If only one non-specific borrowing is there, then the capitalization rate is straightforward the interest rate of the non-specific borrowing. As simple as that. But if I have more than one non-specific borrowing, then I will have to bring out the concept of capitalization rate. So what is this capitalization rate which I am talking about? Let's say for example, I have non-specific borrowings like this. about a term loan and a bank body. Both are my non-specific borrowings. Term loan was 10 lakhs which was borrowed at the rate of 11%. Bank OD I had 4 lakhs which I have borrowed at 8%. Both the non-specific borrowings were utilized in construction of the qualifying asset. Therefore, in such case, how much amount of non-specific borrowing is used, I don't know. Therefore, I'll have to apply a capitalization rate. What is the capitalization rate then? Look at this. What is the interest on term loan? 1,10,000. What is the interest on bank OD? 32,000. What is the total? 1,42,000. What is the borrowing? Total non specific borrowing? 14 lakhs. So, what he says is whenever you have this non specific borrowing, I'll identify something called as a capitalization rate. My capitalization rate CR is given as. 1,42,000 that is total interest on non-specific borrowing 
divided by total non specific borrowing 14 lakhs into 100 answer just check i think it is something around 10% uh, or some change 142 divided by 1400 is 10.14 10.14 is my capitalization rate let's say for example taking the same capitalization rate let's say my qualifying asset had a value of 8 crore 8 lakhs on this let's say my specific borrowing my specific borrowing is let's say 5 lakhs which are borrowed at uh, let's say 14 percent then you need to understand out of 8 lakhs 5 lakhs is financed out of specific borrowing the balance 3 lakhs should be financed out of non-specific borrowings assuming that there is no promoter funds if i have to identify the borrowing cost eligible to be capitalized borrowing cost eligible to be capitalized is equal to my borrowing cost eligible to be capitalized calculate first part specific borrowings How much of specific borrowing was utilized for construction of qualifying asset? 5 lakhs, which I borrowed at 14%. I am taking 12 months completely. Therefore, the amount is 70,000. To the extent of non specific borrowing, non specific borrowing. How much did I utilize? 3 lakhs. What is the capitalization rate? I've already calculated capitalization rate. Your capitalization rate is 10.14. Calculate. This is nothing but 30,420. Total is 1,420,000. We have to record entries for this. I'll go on like this. First, I'll record the amount of borrowing cost paid, borrowing cost account debit to bank. How much borrowing cost did I pay? On non specific borrowings, I paid a total borrowing cost of 1,42,000. Correct? On specific borrowings, I paid a borrowing cost of 70,000. So, 1,42,000 on non specific borrowings plus 70,000 on non specific, uh, on specific borrowing. The total borrowing cost which I incurred is 2,12,000. Out of this 2,12,000, I am capitalizing 1,420. Therefore, I will record the entry like this. p and account debit. How much should be debited to p and I don't know. But I know that the qualifying asset should be capitalized with the borrowing cost Two borrowing cost so i'm cancelling the borrowing cost straight from whatever i paid into my pnl and capitalizing it to the cost of the asset 
how much do i capitalize check i capitalize 1420 so this amount is 100420 capitalized to the cost of the asset total borrowing cost incurred 2 lakh 12000 this is what we got in the first hit so how much should be parked into your pnl 1 lakh 11580 should be transferred to the pnl which should be the balancing figure this should be the balancing figure transferred into the pnl so a part of the borrowing cost is eligible to be capitalized while the balance borrowing cost is eligible to be charged off to pn clear this is the concept of borrowing cost on how we calculate the capitalization rate and how much of borrowing cost is eligible to be capitalized clear this concept of capitalization rate will only arise when i consider situations where i have more than one non-specific borrowing if i only have one non-specific borrowing then i don't have to situation this uh, uh, take this situation directly the interest rate can be considered this is the two entries that we need to pass to ensure that the borrowing cost is capitalized to the extent it relates to qualifying asset the balance borrowing cost is eligible to be charged off to pnl All those who are taking down the example, please take this down. These are the two entries that we pass.
Yes, guy. I assume you people have got enough clarity there. Any doubts? You let me. So what I was saying was, basically, whenever we have this kind of situation, then you need to understand that uh, a qualifying asset can be an inventory or can also be a situation where it is a where it can be also uh, it can be an inventory or it can be a qualifying asset where like a property plan and equipment or could be an intangible asset or could be an investment property. Remember, there are two particular instances where I cannot capitalize borrowing cost to the qualifying asset. What are the two particular instances? Number one, if the asset itself is measured at fair value, if the asset itself is measured at fair value, you cannot capitalize the borrowing cost to the inventory, uh, sorry, to the qualifying asset. Why is that so? Asset itself is measured at fair value. If I capitalize borrowing cost again, the value of the in, in asset will increase beyond its fair value that is the reason why he says certain assets which we have seen under india 16 38 and 40 were measured at their fair value if an asset is measured at fair value borrowing cost is not eligible to be capitalized even if that asset is a qualifying asset number one number two second is a very important exemption guys inventory is also an item of qualifying asset because what did he say as a definition of qualifying asset? An asset which necessarily takes substantial period of time to get ready for its intended use or sale. So what is an asset which is intended for sale? Inventory. That means an inventory can also be an item of qualifying asset. Right? So my question here is, when can an inventory be considered as a qualifying asset? When the inventory necessarily takes substantial period of time, that means the in inventory for the purpose of its production is taking more than 12 months. Let's say I have a case where my production capacity is 5 units per day. 5 units per day. The current order which I have is to supply 2000 of such inventory. 2000 inventory I have to supply or let's say 10,000 inventory I have to supply. 10,000 inventory if I have to supply and my supply is only up to 5 units per day, my production capacity, then 10,000 divided by 5, it takes me 2,000 days to complete the production. 2,000 days to complete production is substantial period of time. Can I consider it as a qualifying asset? Answer is no. Because he says, Inventory produced on a repeated basis through a same production cycle on a repetitive manner. If I am in producing inventory through the same production process on a repetitive manner, you cannot consider it as a substantial period. So to comply with the order, you cannot consider it as substantial period. Inventory produced in huge volumes put through a repeated produ uh, production cycle cannot be considered as qualifying asset even if it takes substantial period of time. Here, two exemptions where I told you. One, if the asset itself is measured at fair value, no capitalization of borrowing cost. Two, inventory produced in large quantities through a same production cycle on a repetitive basis cannot be considered as a qualifying asset even if it takes substantial period of time. These are two particular exemptions which have to be understood along with the standard of India's 23.
since we have understood the qualifying asset and capitalization of borrowing cost to it, let's get into the last three concepts. Commencement of capitalization, suspension of capitalization, cessation of capitalization. What are these three words? Commencement means start. Cessation, cease, stop. Suspension, temporarily I'll break. Temporarily I'll break for it. So if you look at it, what is commencement? Commencement is when should I start capitalizing of borrowing cost? Capitalization of borrowing cost should commence when the following conditions are met. What are the conditions? First one, borrowing cost should be incurred. Cost on qualifying asset should be incurred. And activities necessary for the construction of qualifying asset are in progress. If all these three conditions are met, then you can say that the, the com, there is a commencement of capitalization or the capitalization of borrowing cost should start. Let's see. Borrowing cost is incurred. Let's say for example, I have started a qualifying asset construction on 1st of April 2020. I have taken a borrowing only on 30th of June 2020. From 1st April to 30th June, the enterprise has using its own resources to commence the uh, to uh, for the construction of qualifying asset you cannot capitalize the borrowing cost from 1st april to 30th june because there was no borrowing there was no borrowing cost incurred therefore you have to commence the capitalization of borrowing cost only when the actual borrowing cost is incurred other example i have taken the borrowing on 1st april but i haven't started the construction of qualifying asset two months later in the month of 1st of June, I started the construction of qualifying asset. In such cases, the first two months for April and May, I incurred a borrowing cost, but the borrowing cost is not eligible to be capitalized since the cost on the qualifying asset is not incurred. Since the cost on qualifying asset is not incurred. Number three, I paid an advance to the supplier for supply of materials uh, for the purpose of qualifying asset. Supplier delivered the material after two months. Until two months, I did not uh, undertake any activity for the construction of qualifying asset. I have taken a borrowing. I gave an advance to the supplier. I incurred borrowing cost. I incurred expenditure on qualifying asset. But the material was supplied to me two months later. After two months, I started the construction of qualifying asset. Therefore, in this case, I can say that even though borrowing cost is incurred, even though I incurred a cost on qualifying asset, I am not eligible to capitalize the borrowing cost during the two months period because no activity was take, undertaken which was necessary for the construction of qualifying asset. Therefore, the third condition says activities necessary for the construction of qualifying asset are in progress. Let's say a qualifying asset is a building which I am constructing. Okay. I have taken a borrowing. I have taken a borrowing and I paid the architect a sum of 1 lakh. Expenditure on qualifying asset has been incurred. I went to the architect the very next day. He started doing some drawings on AutoCAD. AutoCAD is a software which the architects use. So he started doing the drawing. We had days and days of discussion on how the building should actually frame up. We had disagreements, we had agreements, but ultimately it took 20 days for the final drawing to come in. Finally, I took the drawing, I went to an engineer and I said, according to this drawing, I want the construction of qualifying asset. Engineer walked into the premises, looked at the land, took the dimensions of the land, said, uh, you know, check the level of the land, said that the land is not level. So he started guessing or estimating what is the excavation work or cleaning up work that he has to do. For all this, he took another 10 days. 11th day, he started cleaning up the process and construction of qualifying asset. So a planning and designing was what was happening over 30 days period. Can I capitalize borrowing cost during 30 days? Yes, because he says your activity is necessary for the construction of qualifying asset also include designing and planning as well so activities like designing and planning are also considered as activities necessary for the construction of qualifying asset clear 
so i will start capitalization of borrowing cost when all the three conditions are met borrowing cost is incurred expenditure on on qualifying asset is incurred activities necessary for the construction of borrowing cost are in progress then we will come into the next paragraph cessation cessation means stop you cannot capitalize after that i'll give you the sentence listen to it very carefully i'm saying the capitalization of borrowing cost on a qualifying asset should cease should stop when the asset is ready for its intended user sale capitalization of borrowing cost on the qualifying asset should cease when the asset is ready for its intended user sale very good let's see for example i am constructing a building this building which i am constructing is an investment property with an intention to let it out on operating lease in future i took a borrowing for it i started incurring borrowing cost i incurred expenditure on qualifying asset activities necessary for construction of qualifying asset are in progress i started capitalizing the borrowing cost building was almost complete where it said stop capitalization i thought if i stop capitalization then the borrowing cost should go into the pnl pnl will get affected so i said let me say until i find a tenant until i find a lessee let us continue the construction construction was over so what he did every day he used to go into the construction site fit one screw into the into the window and come back fit one screw into each window and come back like that he continued to do it for another 3 months 3 months later he found a tenant he fit all screws in one day and he said yes stop capitalization the intention of the enterprise there is to use the provisions of india 23 to prolong the period of capitalization why do they want to prolong because if i stop capitalization the entire borrowing cost should be coming into pnl i don't want my pnl to be affected that's why i continued the construction of qualifying asset until i find a tenant once i found a tenant operating lease income was recognized borrowing cost expenditure can be recognized enterprise happy is it in compliance with the standard answer is no because i read out the sentence a little modified i'll give you the exact sentence now capitalization of borrowing cost should cease when the qualifying asset is substantially ready for intended user sale not ready he use the word substantially ready when i use the word substantially ready that means basically it need not be ready in complete sense an almost ready situation is sufficient the intention of including this word substantial is to discourage enterprises from taking undue benefit of the paragraph clear if that word substantially was not there then the treatment which i suggested to you saying that you fit one screw every day and you keep on capitalizing would have been correct but here now in this situation since the asset was substantially ready they have to stop capitalizing and the suggestion which i gave you to prolong capitalization of borrowing cost is not appropriate as per india 23 so we have seen commencement when to start we have seen cessation when to stop now my question is what is suspension suspension means temporary period a particular athlete was found caught of do doping or use of illegal drugs suspended for 2 months what happens after 2 months he can come back and start playing his sport that is a temporary break that they happen so there is a temporary break even in capitalization also he saying for a temporary period i will suspend the capitalization of borrowing cost question will be why why capitalization of borrowing cost can be suspended and be suspended if the active development of qualifying asset is interrupted okay qualify ca the ca capitalization of borrowing cost on a qualifying asset should be suspended when the active development of the asset is interrupted 
active development is interrupted means what that means i am not performing any activities necessary for the construction of qualifying asset let's say for example my qualifying asset is being worked upon only five days a month five days a week two days saturday and sunday are off we are ca students we don't have off but in general sense weekends are normally off saturday sunday they stop working uh, gandhi jayanti that uh, br ambedkar birthday guru nanak jayanti all jayantis are there in india festivals don't even ask muslim christian hindu parsi we enjoy every festival there is no particular religious debate as far as festivals is concerned we will celebrate ramzan we will celebrate christmas ramzan we will eat halim we will eat kheer christmas we will we will have our cake hindu uh, whenever you have diwali we have sweets everything we do so those holidays also you consider so two week two days every week 52 weeks 104 days off apart from that august 15th january 26th gandhi jayanti all these offs included another 10 days festivals take another 20 days so about 130 days or 140 days i don't really work total 365 days or 360 days in a year if 130 days i don't work that means one third of the days i am not actually working if i am not working for one third days that means for one third days there is no active development on the construction of qualifying asset when there is no active development in the construction of qualifying asset then your capitalization should suspend so therefore out of total borrowing cost one third it should be transferred to pnl two thirds is eligible to be capitalized is absolutely wrong why because he said capitalization should be suspended when active development is interrupted no full stop over an extended period of time what do you mean by extended period dasara holidays four days not extended period christmas holidays eight days not extended period extended period is beyond normal length of interruption beyond normal period let's say for example covid situation has occurred suddenly for two months there was a lockdown no active development happened 60 days we did not perform any activity this is called as a beyond normal length or extended period of interruption in active development of the asset therefore the suspension the capitalization should be suspended capitalization of borrowing cost should continue if the suspension is necessary to get the asset ready for its intended use or sale what do you mean by this capitalization of borrowing cost should continue if the suspension is necessary to make the asset ready for its intended use or sale someone gave the example of cheese or wine cheese and wine you actually make the mix and leave it for a set number of years as it ages it will start becoming even more better so in such kind of situations there is no active development which you do but it the uh, leaving it out or not doing any active development itself is necessary for making the asset ready for its intended use or sale therefore in such situation you are not supposed to suspend capitalization i will not suspend capitalization of borrowing cost if the uh, if the act if the interruption in active development of the asset is necessary to make the asset ready for its intended use or sale clear now you tell me any doubts even if the cause is beyond the control of organization absolutely they, if there is a strike or a lockout if there is a strike or a lockout in the enterprise then obviously it is beyond the control of the enterprise it is necessary for us to suspend capitalization even in those situations as well 